Hey everybody, Jesse here for 3 Prong Gaming and welcome back to another episode. And in today's episode, we are going to jump back into the AI and uh, do some work in the behavior tree. And we're going to set up some employment based tasks and decorators uh, that will go along with the previous episodes. So sit back, relax, and let's get this started. Well, as you can see here, we got the behavior tree open, and in the last uh, several episodes, we were setting up, uh, getting ready to do our um, smart construction, intelligent construction, uh, getting the NPC to uh, look for jobs, and uh, yeah, so all that will start to come through to fruition today. Um, we'll be able to do a little bit of testing, but uh, he's not going to be able to look for a job quite yet, but uh, we'll get a little bit of... Uh, random movement for, from him through the world and set up the behavior trees so hopefully by the next episode I know I keep saying the next episode but hopefully by the next episode we'll have him be able to uh, search for a job and do what he needs to do so let's go ahead and get the start go ahead and open up your NPC uh, behavior tree right here in your AI folder um, open this up and this is what we got um, pretty simple right at this point. We just got our root node and uh, we got our working selector right here. And this, trust me, this is going to be full of stuff uh, at some point. Um, but yeah, so today we're just focusing on construction. So let's go ahead and grab this and move this off. We're actually going to make another branch on this working tab right here. And uh, let's go ahead and pull off of this and type in sequence. All right. And in the sequence, let's just go ahead and make its node name. We'll call this unemploy unemployment. Okay. So this is the branch that will run in the working area um, if he is unemployed. Okay. So what we need to do now is now we got this branch right here, but we need to be able to figure out a way to run this branch how's it going to know to run this branch or this branch or eventually all the other branch branches when it comes to working well easiest way to do that is to set up a service okay services are pretty cool let's go ahead and go up here and select a new service it's going to open it up there and as always it's going to give us a very generic name so first things first let's jump back into the content browser select it and hit F2 and let's go ahead and name this S underscore job type check. Okay. Now, if you remember correctly uh, from the past, I know it's been a while since we've been the AI, but I like to preface all the names of my AI stuff with the type of uh, whatever it is. And like this is a service. So we put an S. Uh, T for task, because as you can see here, regardless of what it is, D for decorator, is the icons are all the same, so they're a pain in the butt to find. So you can easily just come up here if this is full of stuff and just type T into search and hit enter, and everything with the T will eventually pop up. But yeah, anyways, so let's go ahead now and jump back into our job type check. And services, if you're unaware, it's ultimately like... <laughs> You can define tick. It, it does a lot of checks for you and, and can determine like what we're going to use here for um, dictating which uh, dictating which um, branch it's going to run. But it's nice because you can alter the tick behavior. Um, you know, normally tick run, runs every single frame. Well, this you can tell it to run, you know, X amount of seconds away. So let's go ahead and right click in here. And because it is tick based, let's just go ahead and type in tick and we're going to get event receive tick AI. I always like to select the AI version because it gives you both these nodes right here. Whereas in the non AI version gives you a couple different things. It gives you just the owner actor. Now this for what we're going to do right now, we probably just could go with this. And actually, I think this is nope. It's an actor. I was going to say, I, I thought maybe this was the, uh, just the controller but uh no just stick always use the ai because i at some point i believe the other ones that are not listed as ai both tick and execute um 
they're going to be deprecated at some point soon. So just get used to using the AI. Um, it is far superior. So we need to hook this up. Um, if you remember from some of our previous um, tasks that we created, we created a, let's just go ahead and open up this assigned work construction. And at the beginning of this one, we've got this reference cast right here. So let's just go ahead and highlight that, push control C. Uh, we can close that out, jump back into your job check service and control V. All right, let's just go ahead and paste that in there. But at least for right now um, and probably ever, I don't think we're going to really need the controller um, for this particular service. So let's go ahead and jump in here. we got to create the variables anyways, because remember when we copy it in here, it's got this pawn and this controller variable, which we do not have over here yet. So let's just go ahead and select this stuff for the controller and delete it because if we don't need to cast for it, then there's no reason to do anything for it. So let's just go ahead and delete that stuff. Okay. So move this on over here and just hook in the execution right there. And uh, for this pawn, let's go ahead and right click it, create variable pawn, and it's going to create it with everything you need. See MPC BP type right there. So perfect. We've got that. So services, I do believe, and this is where it really comes in handy having this set up here is because now make sure you hook your pawn back up here is because, um, I don't think services ever lose their references. So I'm not a hundred percent sure of that, but that's why it, you know, at tasks, I'm pretty sure lose their references. So this, that, this reference check is, you know, not probably necessary. You're probably going to have, it's probably going to cast every single time it hits a task. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on all that, but either way, just run this in all of them. And it's just going to make things a whole lot easier. So now we got that all cleaned up and I did move some of my detail panels around a little bit here. Could give me some more screen space. Um, but, uh, let's go ahead and just delete the controller input. All right. Hit control, save it, and then let's jump back out here now. So now just take your pawn, hook it up just like that. And let's go ahead and, and rename that. Get rid of the underscore two. Perfect. All right. This is going to be relatively simple service. Um, go ahead and let's grab our pawn variable here. Let's get it. And then pull off of this um, profile, get my profile. Right, because this is the job type check. So now we got to figure out how we're going to check um, the type of job he has. That's ultimately what this is going to do. So let's just go ahead and and actually we won't break this. We'll just split the struct right here. Um, breaking is a lot easier um, when you have uh, uh, when you're setting it and getting all that stuff. But for just getting a little bit of information, it's all right here. So let's go ahead and grab. We've got the my profile occupation type. Let's go ahead and pull off of this and my Skype on my phone is going nuts. I need to uh, turn that off real quick. Sorry about that. If you heard that vibrating, let's uh, pull off of this, right? We need to actually, let's just right click it, promote it to variable. Let's call this NPC underscore occupation. And the reason why I put the underscore here is because NPC is in all caps. So the underscore will separate it as you see right here without actually showing the underscore. So um, just makes it a little bit more legible when you're looking at it in the graph. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that just like so. So now pull off the same pin and do equal equal and we need to equal enum. All right. Now grab the let's see we need um ah uh, we need to set up we need a, a place to be able to compare this um so we need to go back into the behavior tree really quick okay and we need to create a new blackboard key so click your blackboard here and in our blackboard let's go ahead and name this new key um right here select a new key it will be of type enum and we need occupation type hit enter now we need an enum to go with this and i don't think we've set this up yeah we do right here occupation type 
So go ahead and select that. So, cause we're going to store in our behavior tree, what our occupation type is. So that way we can use it a little bit later, um, in the behavior tree. Uh, it'll make things a whole lot easier. So, all right. So now we got that. Did we save it? Yes, we saved it. Jump back into your job type check and create a new variable here. Call it occupation type. And we need to make this a blackboard key selector. So just type in key and take the blackboard key selector, make sure it's editable so we can use it as, so we can see it in the behavior tree. All right, go ahead and compile that. So now drag out your occupation type. Let's get it. Now we just set it as an enum. So let's go ahead and get blackboard value as enum. All right. Now, even though we told it it's of occupation type, it's still the, the way blackboards work is it's not going to know exactly what it is. Okay. Um, because it can change, you can make it change at runtime and whatever else. So, but it comes out as a byte. So the information is still there. It's just not like this where we hover over it and it shows its occupation type enum. This just comes out as a byte. Now, typically you could just take and plug it in and it's going to automatically put in the convert node for you, but it's not going to do that here. So we need to just drag off an open space and type convert, uh, enum byte to enum occupation type okay select that and then drag off of that and now that will plug in just like so okay so insert a branch here because we're running a comparison here so we got a conditional check so hook that in All right, and then off this branch if we are not equal to the same if in other words if our profile occupation type is different than what we have stored in the blackboard then what we need to do is we need to take the occupation type let's get it let's set blackboard value as enum and then the value of that will be just take your mpc occupation that we set right there and plug it in like so all right so run this off with a false and if it's true then well we don't want to do anything because well we already know what it is so that's ultimately all this um this service is going to do for us is just continually check because at any point who knows you may destroy the building that they're working in um i think we're going to set up a future function to be able to like uh you know because there's going to be a point where the player is going to probably have like 10 construction offices because they're trying to hurry up and, and, you know, build a bunch of cool stuff, but then it's going to get to a point to where you're not going to build much. So maybe we'll set up a functionality to where you can, um, close down a building and it will fire all the employees. And so now those employees will need to, you know, change their job. So there's going to be various factors that we're going to set up to where their job type will change. So that's why we went ahead and threw this into a service here. So make sure you compile it and save it. And because, um, this is a service, unlike the tasks, we don't need to see if we type in finish here, there is nothing. We don't need to add anything to the end of this. It's just going to continually tick this information. Now you're saying, well, but Jesse tick, isn't that going to, well, yeah, it is. Let's go into here. Tick is very expensive. However, go ahead and right click on your working tab right here and select add service. So let's go ahead and add our S job type check. And now with this, like I said, the cool thing about the, the services, even though they're tick based, you can set the frequency of how it ticks. So you, we don't necessarily need this ticking all the time. Now, remember if this isn't ticking all the time, everything underneath it's not ticking at the same time either. So you don't want to set this value too high, but if we leave it at its default state where it's ticking every half a second, that means it's only ticking once every about 30 frames. So that's actually quite a decent cost savings right there. And of course, the way we set this up is, um, you know, it's really not running that much information. So it's not going to take up that much processing power to run that service. Um, random deviation, um, you can leave it at point 0.1. That means like it shows up here, um, it's going to run tick every 0.4 to 0.6 seconds because there's a random deviation. So it's not always going to be half second. It could be a little bit more. It could be just a little bit less. 
Um, we can go ahead and leave that. We don't necessarily need the random feature. So if you set that to zero and you just strictly have this running every half second, that would be fine. So just keep that in mind. If you need to save a little bit somewhere on uh, uh, processing time, um, you can come in here and maybe slow this down a little bit more or just get rid of your random deviation. Okay. So now on this unemployment, what we need to do before we come into here is we need to make sure that we are actually unemployed. So the best way to do that is we set up this occupation type right here. So let's just go ahead and right click on the unemployment sequence and do add decorator. Now the decorator we want to add is just a blackboard. What this is going to do is this is going to allow us to check any of the keys we have in the blackboard. So go ahead and select it. And uh, what we need to do now is, well, let's change the node name. Let's call this one is unemployed. It's always nice to set up uh, your node names um, just because, I mean, it still knows it's a blackboard. So setting up its node name is just for your references. But as this gets bigger, it's going to be nice to just look at it and say, oh, is he unemployed? Okay, that's what this does. This is the branch. It, that's what it's checking. Is he unemployed? Okay. Uh, employed. Did I spell that right? Unemployed. Yeah. Okay. So with it selected, what we need to do is the Blackboard key right here that we need to check is not self-actor. We need to have it check the occupation type. Now we selected that because it's enum. We're going to get a couple extra options here, or at least just one. And the key value we need to check, if you click on that, it's already defaulted to unemployment. But uh, if it's not what you want, if when you're checking the employment type, like when we get over here to construction, we'll set that differently. But uh, just make sure it says unemployment and we want it is equal to. All right. You got several options in here, but is equal to unemployment. And it'll tell you right here, occupation type is equal to unemployment. So if this is true, then it'll run this branch. Okay. So while we're at it, just so we know when we test, um, we need this to not execute unless he's a construction worker. Because right now, even if we're unemployed and we run everything through here, when this sequence finishes, it's going to jump back up here. And regardless if he's a construction worker or not, it will automatically jump right in here. And that's not what we want. So let's just set this up real quick. Right click on the construction sequence, add decorator, just like we did Blackboard. Um, select that and make call this uh, no name is construction worker and set its uh, Blackboard key to occupation type is equal to construction. All right, let's just go ahead and save that just because. All right, so now this will not run unless he is actually switched to a construction worker. All right, so now we created this random uh, wait time right here. So just uh, select that and then control C, hopefully this comes right there. Sometimes when you control W, it throws it like way down here in the graph. So control C, control V, copy and paste, control C, control V seems to work a little bit better. All right. Now I want to change some of these functions. The, the one thing you want to try to do when you're creating your behavior tree is make things as reusable and flexible as possible. And you're going to see, we're going to end up changing some of this stuff that we've already created. Um, but yeah, one thing I did in my main project, my main advanced project and is I've got a lot of tasks that do ultimately the same thing, yeah, you know, so I'll explain as we move along, but you want to try to make your, your stuff as flexible and reusable as possible. It's just going to save you that much more coding and it's, it, it's just going to make things a whole lot easier and better to use. So with this random weight, let's go ahead and double click it. Now we're not going to really change anything in here, but let's make it to where we can set these values elsewhere. Okay. Right now it's minimum value is 0.2. We got its maximum to three full seconds. But what if you want to change that, you know, then you'd have to come in here and make a separate one for, you know, the other ones, you know, say we do want a three second wait here, but here we may only want it to wait up to two seconds. Um, well, how do we do that? Well, the way it's set up right now, we'd have to create a whole nother random weight task. Well, let's make it flexible. So come in here into the random weight uh, task and right click on the minimum value right there, promote it to a var variable. We'll call this one minimum weight and then right click on the maximum, promote it to a variable. We'll call this maximum weight, hit enter and let's go ahead and move that down so we can see both of them. 
Now, because there was already values in this float range, you could see over here, let's go ahead and compile it. You'll see over here that those values transferred over to the default values. So the minimum is our automatically defaulted to 0.2 and the maximum is defaulted to three. If you want to set your defaults differently, then by all means, go ahead and do that. So now what good does that do us? We still have to come into the task and set these individually, which will alter every single one. Well, that's easy. Make these editable. Okay. So now go ahead and compile it and save it. Now, if we jump back into our behavior tree, you can see those values are now exposed. So both these say minimum weight 0.2, maximum weight 0.3. So like I said, what if we want this one to be uh, a maximum wait time of three seconds and this one only two? So now we can come over here and type two. There we go. Save it. And it does not change this one here two seconds, three seconds. So by exposing those variables, it makes this function that much more flexible. Okay, so let's go ahead and just change that back. I'm gonna change it back to three. You do whatever tickles your fancy. All right, so now we got the random weight. I always like to start my new branches with the weight um, just because you'll find if you don't have any form of weight in between tasks and things like that, it's it moves so fast in your behavior tree there's times it can skip or miscalculate your tasks. So always have some sort of weight somewhere. And uh, there's times if I've got a big branch, a big sequence going on, I'll usually put a couple weights in it in the middle. Um, but you'll find those spots. That, you know, if you don't use them or use them enough, you'll know when you're going, everything's right, what's going on? So put a weight in there and see if that fixes your issue. It, you know, so it, it usually will. All right. So that out of the way now let's go ahead and we've got this do we have this we don't have a let's see just type a t uh wait random nope we don't have a random now we need to create a random move to right because if he's unemployed we want him to just you know there's nothing for him to do so we don't want him just standing in the world so let's go ahead and create it so he can um just rant, pick a random spot in the world and uh move to it so let's go up here to tasks, select it. We need a new BTT blueprint base. Again, gives us a generic name. So let's change that right off the bat. Do T underscore random move to location. All right. Automatically saved it for us. So let's jump into, into the uh, event graph here. So right click. Let's do receive execute. AI. All right. Now we don't need to do any casting off of this particular function. We're going to use this pawn right here, but um, we don't need anything, any functions or variables or anything specifically from our MPC blueprint. All we need to do is just pull off of this. All we need is get actor location. And then from this, we need to drag off and do get random point in navig navigable radius. Okay. So now again, to make this random move to location flexible, let's go ahead and right click on radius, promote it to a variable, get that down here. And let's just go ahead and call this one max radius. For now, um, let's go ahead and compile it so we have access to the default value. I'm going to set this default value to 1,000. Now, remember, this is centimeters. So the maximum for the default value for his, for, his, uh, for this random point in navigable range is 1,000 centimeters from where he's at, which is, what, 1,000 centimeters? What, that's one meter? So he's, you know, moving three feet in one direction or whatever 1,000 centimeters is, all right? But that's what that value is. We don't need to worry about nav data and we don't need to worry about filter class. So create a new variable here, call this target location, make it of type blackboard key selector, make sure it is editable and make sure your max radius is also editable. All right, so now grab your target location in here, get it. Now remember target location is a vector right here. we got target location. So we're going to need to set it as a vector. So pull off this one, do set blackboard value as vector. Okay. So go ahead and hook, hook in the execution here and the value will be this 
right there. All right, perfect. So now don't forget, we are in a task. So now we do need to type finish execute, plug that in there and success. Yeah, we succeeded. So yeah, we always succeed with that. So compile it, save it. What is that right there on my screen? Open that, what is that? Oh, how am I be, what the heck? Hmm, that was weird. All right. Um, yeah, so that's finished right there. So let's jump back into the behavior tree. Make sure we save it right here. So drag off of this and do, uh, what did we just call that one? We called it random move to location. So, and I probably should have renamed the default no name, but let's just go ahead and call this one ran, random move to location just makes it a whole lot more descriptive if we can see that name instead of BTT task. All right. So yeah, you could probably come in here and do class defaults and set the default name right there. Um, that's probably what I will do. As a matter of fact, I'll just control C. I should be doing this right now and control V. There we go. Compile it and save it. All right. Back in the behavior tree. So now because we expose those variables, we need to come in here, the target location, make sure you set target location and max radius. I, you can change it whatever you want because we expose a variable. I'm just going to leave it as a default 1000 right now. I'll probably bump it up in the uh, near future, but that is just fine for now. So now that we did that, we need to actually move our NPC. Well, we created the custom move function right here before um, the move to location, but we didn't make it very flexible. All right. And boy, we are running up on time. I really would like to get this done right here. So open up your move to location and uh, let's go ahead and change this up a bit. Okay. First, we need to, to uh, fix this. We don't really need the controller in this, in this particular function. Um, at least we don't need anything specifically from our custom AI controller. Okay. Which is right. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back into, um, let's see, our job type check. Select the cast reference. We can go in and delete all the stuff like we did when we set this one up, but let's just control C just to save time and then come in here and control V. Let's go ahead and delete that one and then just hook this up and everything should be fine. Let's double check. Yeah, the variable is already set because we already had one in here, so it'll link up just fine. So um, just hook up your pawn right here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the underscore two, All right? Make sure you hook the execution back up, but we're going to have to add some stuff in here in between now, because like I said, we need to make this a lot more flexible. All right, man. You know what? I'm not going to be shy with backing away from this. Um, so we are up there on time a little bit. Let's see. We've got a little bit, eh, you know what? We can, I, I can finish this one. We'll, we'll run a little bit over on time. I can finish this move to location and then I think we'll call it a wraps. Okay. So after this right here, let's just give ourselves some space. We can organize later. Let's drop in a sequence. So just hold S on your keyboard and click in the graph. All right. Hook up this sequence here. So now off this first pin, what we need to do is, um, man, there's still going to be some stuff we need to do. Let's do is valid. And do the one with the question mark right here should be the only one available. We need an item. What we need to do is we need to grab our pawn. All right. Get this. Pull off of him. Get to his profile. Get my profile. Right click on that. And let's go ahead and split the struct pin. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to check to see if our place of employment is valid or not. Okay. Because we're going to use this. Um, for a whole bunch of um, things, but we're going to, what we need to do to check um, the different types of locations that we may want to move to is let's go ahead and create an enum. All right. Now I, I know I probably bounced off a little right there. Might've confused you exactly what we're doing right here. And uh, I apologize for that, but let's try to put the pieces together really quick. So jump into uh, your content browser, go into the enums folder, and then right click, what we're gonna to need to do is create a new enum. We need to call this 
go ahead blueprints enumeration let's call this one uh location type underscore enum okay now this list will expand at some point um, let's just go ahead and put four in here for right now all right control a let's make this first one let's just call this one either none or i'm going to put in none selected okay control a for the second one let's call this one home uh, control a office hit enter and control a um, even though we don't have this one right now we know it's coming up so let's just type rest a u rant All right there's going to be some other types that we end up having to put in here like maybe entertainment maybe we'll do some entertainment type buildings or um, who knows whatever type of location will go in here so that way this will make by doing this one enumerator it's going to make our move to location much more flexible so go ahead and jump back into your move to location okay and with that so now we need to check to see if um, this place of employment is valid if it is then let's create a new variable we'll call this one place of employment except for with this even though this is coming off of here as a building master bp we actually want this to be a vector okay we don't want this editable we don't want this uh to be the ability to change this from the behavior tree okay now the reason why we're doing this as a, a vector and we're going to have another one once we do residency in here we'll end up having another variable in here for um place of resident res, residency or or whatever okay um, let's go ahead and pull that in here as a set and if our place of employment is valid then we want to set this this value well what do we want to set it to well let's go ahead and pull off a place of employment and do type in entrance and let's get our entrance remember that's how we enter our buildings is or where we go to when we go to our building is to the entrance pull off of this and do get world location right there let's pull this out a little bit and then take the world location of your entrance and plug it into place of employment just like that okay so all right off the then one pull off of here what we need to do actually grab a a new variable call this one location type this will link into what we just did for the enum make it of type location type enum all right compile it let's go ahead and set this one editable we do want this one editable because we want to change this from the behavior tree but drop this in let's get it pull off type in switch switch on location type enum so now we're going to get that and this is going to have everything that we have in that enum like so so plug that into the then one all right so now based off of that enum and what we select in the behavior tree will dictate <laughs> dictate which branch is used in this particular function okay so it will make it that much more flexible all right so it may seem a little bit hefty to do it like this but trust me it's better to do it like this i feel than to create a whole bunch of different move to tasks based off of um where you're moving to because we're going to have to do we're going to have to, we're going to use this move to location quite a bit right so if it's none selected what we need to do none selected would be um for example well here where we do our random move to location we set the target location so if we're using this after the random move to location which will be our first choice um well, we want none selected, right? Because we're already setting the target location. So just take the none selected and plug it straight into the AI move to. Okay. Um, right now, what we need, actually, we'll just leave it like that. We're going to come back and we're going to have to hit this office right here. All right. But we're not going to set any. This is going to be the last functionality that we set up um, for today. So go ahead and grab this and drag it around a little bit we don't need anything if it's not valid we're not going to run anything off of here so because it is an event receive make sure we have um, our finish executes which we should because we set up set this up before one other thing i did do in this um, is i i'll click remove that uh, aborted pin we put into here um, 
we handle abort right here. So I'm not worried about coming down here. I don't want any iffy behavior if it aborts to finish execute without actually aborting. It shouldn't. We haven't had any problem to this point, but let's just disconnect that to be on the safe side. Okay. So let's compile and save it. Jump in, back into the behavior tree. Now pull off to move to location. Make sure you get our T move to location. Right now, all these pins are open. Make sure you set them target location, destination, current location, and location type. We want it none selected. Okay. Now, because we changed that down here, what we called move to job site now has that location type. Now, this will end up having to be office, right? So we'll worry about that in the next episode. Just remember that any other task we have in here now that we changed it is going to have to be corrected for its particular branch there. So this one is just move to location. Let's call this node right here. Move to, move to random location. There we go. So now we know that that's just what that's going to do right there. And, you know, that's it right now. Let's go ahead and test this. I told you we'd be able to do a little bit of testing. Um, let, so let's just go ahead and do that right now. Make sure target location, make sure all this is set up, target, destination, current, and none selected. Um, there is another task we're going to have to run off of this. Um, not important to be able to test what we're going to test right now. So we'll pick it back up in the next episode to where we start setting up the actual switching to getting a job and switching to the construction worker portion of it. So let's just go ahead and jump out anywhere that we have a play button, hit play. If we come out here and we drop in an NPC, he's not going to have it or she's not going to have a job. So she's just going to randomly move around in the world, right? She's going to pick location. Oh, nope, I can't find a job or anything. So I'm going to pick another random location and she's just going to move around just like that, right? Pick another random location. So that's all she's going to do until she actually finds a job. She's just going to move around the world. Perfect. So that's what we set up today. I know it looks real minor. It will become very handy in the future. We just needed some sort. You can set up any other sort of behavior you want for unemployment. Um, it's hopeful that, you know, you shouldn't have too much unemployment. But if you do, you know, we just don't want them standing around in the world. So whether you have them go to a bar and drink themselves to death or something, you know, whatever you want to do in your particular game, you can go ahead and do that. Put it in your unemployment area here. And we may end up changing it in the future. But ultimately right now, that's all we're going to do is he's just he or she's just going to randomly walk through the world until a job becomes available, which we will set up in another episode or two so yeah next episode we will start setting up this actual being able to switch to a construction worker so up there on time and i hope you guys learned something from this if you did please do me a favor go down and hit that like button it helps me out a ton if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button as well and uh yeah you can follow me on facebook and twitter i won't spam your feeds i don't use that often i just keep you guys up to date for some things and uh, check out one of the other videos that are might be playing on the screen right now uh, probably just one i doubt there's two up there so until next time peace